All right, all right, all right. What the hell is going on, everybody? And welcome back. We've got ourselves a big best of three match here. Except it's not a best of three. It's a best of nothing. Let's get rid of that bloody scoreboard down the bottom. We don't need those numbers. This is a ladder match between Rayner in the bottom left side of the map, hiding on his 7,000 MMR barcode. And in the top right, Max Bax on his just below 7,000 MMR barcode. Barcode versus barcode on the EU ladder. Uh, of course, in the post-editing, we'll chuck some names down here, so hopefully it reflects the actual names. And uh, it should be a great match because it's Dynasty, which is a map that is grossly Protoss favored, according to Rainer and other players. But there's been some cool tricks which Rainer and other Zergs have been doing. So if we're lucky, he may show us the awesome maneuver. Those uh, who know about the maneuver know that it's fun, it's cool, it's funky, and the fact that he's going for the gold base tells us, yeah, he's probably doing it. So stay tuned. We're going to be seeing a fun maneuver out of Rainer. Now, to be fair, Max Bax up here, he's he's going for this gateway, which is very safe, but I actually think you can just wall off down here, still take the gold base, and then take a third for free. So I don't know, maybe there's a weakness to that that I'm not aware of, like Ling drops in the back door or Nidus Worms back there. It's, too hard to defend that while defending this wall off, but I don't know, man. I personally would have loved to see it. It is a hatchery gas pool for Rainer. Max Max is going to start harassing right now. Probe is going to go after these uh, these minerals. It's funny using a barcode, right? Because you're like, oh god, who is it? But then it's like, wait, you're the you're one of the three people who are uh, at, at above six thousand nine hundred MMR on EU ladder. Your, your attempts to hide are not so successful at this point, are they? They're they're kind of like um, yeah. We know we know the 6900 Protoss is is always max packs. We know the the 7.1 Zerg is Rainer and the, the 7.4 Zerg is is Serral. That's it's, it's, there's no hiding this, mate. You know, the Terran up there as well. It's always going to be Clem. Anyways, we've got the probes over there. Nexus in the back door. So he does go for the back door Nexus as you'd expect. Now. The maneuver that we were talking about, gang... Oh my god, that's a very quick link speed. Ooh, so if, if double adept rocks up, he can come around and surround those. Nice. Um, there is a maneuver where you can actually tunnel your queen through the minerals. And that's what I'm hoping Rainer does here. Because if you don't do that, adepts can run in, snipe a drone, pull back. Run in, snipe a drone, pull back. And, but if you pop a queen to the backside, you can do damage to the adept when it's out here. You can spread creep. And it just delays the adepts from disrupting this gold base. Yeah, he's going for it. He's going for it. So the easy way to do this is with an Evo chamber and a hold position drone right there. Now you want to face the queen in the direction it goes. And by putting a creep tumor down, you actually displace the queen. So because the creep tumor comes out of nowhere and it suddenly, while it's building, it actually has collision size until it finishes and goes underground. So during that space, basically the game says, hey, we need to find a space for this to hide. Now, Rainer does make a mistake there, loses one of his drones, but the Adept takes a fair bit of damage and he can now spread that creep forward. So fantastic use there. Someone in chat says, bug users. I like that because that works in two different ways. He is both a dirty bug user because he's a Zerg player and because he's abusing a bug. To be fair, Protoss players have been abusing this for years. All the Cannon Rush guys will always go up and just, they can put a probe there. Squeak, build a pylon and just pop the pop the probe out through the minerals. They do this stuff all the time. Now, to be fair, we've already lost a drone and we're still losing a ton of mining time. Rainer also took a while on the previous wave to focus fire the weak adept, which did cost him a bit more damage than he would have liked to take. Max Max just fighting this, dude. Max Max is straight up fighting it. Oh God, Queen has to run back to the safety of the other Queen. Ling's gonna go after the adepts and they will get rid of them. Oracle will take out a few of those Zerglings though. Units lost tab. My phone is really loud. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not, but we immediately hung up on that. Who's calling me phone? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you calling me phone, human people? Oh, uh, hello. We have a special deal on solar panels. Just give me your credit card info, your social security number, and the password to your house. Uh, I'm like, wait, password to my house? I don't even know what I'm talking about right now, guys. What can I say? I got distracted. My phone's beeping at me. I'm telling it to shut up right now so I could focus on the video game commentary. We don't do retakes here. We uh, we don't restart game cars. We don't disrupt them. We ignore that shiz. Now it is going to be a third base on the way. Double Oracle. Let let let's do a bit of a a bit of a uh, take take stock of what's going on now. Scarlet's in the chat, guys. She says already behind lull. She said that like a minute or so ago. Now now to be fair, yes, he took some damage. However, is it worse than taking the other base? That's the question, because it's not, oh, did we take damage or we're in an awkward spot? Because we know we're in an awkward spot. 
But if Protoss gets the gold and we don't take the gold, I think we might be kind of screwed. Now, don't be, don't be, don't get me wrong. This map's probably going to be a veto for a lot of players out there in the competitive circuit. But I love that Rainer is trying to figure this stuff out. Dude, wouldn't that be cool if you just had a password to your house? But then someone just guesses it or something. It's like a really common word. You're really stupid. You just make it like, hello or something. And it's like literally anyone goes to your house like, hello, is anyone home? Your door just opens. That'd be great. I'd be afraid to walk into someone's house though if that happened. I'd be like, I'm definitely getting murdered. Like there's someone in there with a with a screwdriver or like a, I don't know, a plank of wood with a rusty nail sticking out of it, just waiting behind like a door somewhere to come out and kill me, harvest my organs. Oracles aren't really finding any damage. Rain is, Rain is actually doing really well. This plus one melee is on the way as well. Oh. Oh! Rainer accidentally signaling on the minimap. That's uh, something you use in team games, guys. Not something you usually use in 1v1. <laughs> Toggling the uh, minimap there. Screwdrivers are the best weapon, guys. Because the thing about a screwdriver is it's not premeditated. If someone uses a screwdriver to try to kill, you know they weren't planning to kill. They're just like, nah, just randomly felt like it. And that's the only thing I had around. You know, like, it's it's a proper weapon of, like, a, a psychopath, man. Uh, some would say, isn't that less a sign? Wouldn't premeditating the murder be worse? No, in my demented world, apparently just randomly murdering is less bad. I don't, there's no logic there at all as I think about that. But anyways, uh, Blink Stalker pressure comes in. Rainer trying to hold this middle base is kind of crazy. I always give this base up. I always just expand to the top, but he's basically saying, hey, if I can hold this area, I'm good. He does have melee. Quick Hydra Den infestation pit, and he's got roach speed and a few roaches. So we can defend with Ravager Ling against the Stalkers. Try to get to Hydras. He's only on 59 workers against 65, and there's a fourth on the way for Max Pax. So Max Pax is in a lovely position. Robo Bay is there as well. Zergling Roach coming forward. Adept does go past. Lings will jump on those Adepts, but they are in a nice little corner. Luckily for Rainer, Max Pax was not focusing on them. He was basically saying, that's a distraction. Have fun dealing with that. And oh my god. Adept is lasting a surprisingly long amount of time. Finally does go down. Now, once the gold base opens up, you can get in and out freely. The reason I, I find it awkward is until about eight and a half minutes when this mineral patch and this mineral patch disappear, you, you can't rally between the bases very easily. You've got to go all the way around. But once that opens, you will be able to rally out. So good point from Twitch chat pointing that one out. Once it's once it opens, this base is pretty easy to defend. But until then, your rally point kind of sucks. Ooh, those stasis traps just wait and Max Pack's getting some good trading so far. There's a lot of lings though. If he can overwhelm, and those lings can come in from behind. This could be big, but the stasis traps will get him. Ah, uh, two stasis traps force him to disengage. They do at least force Max Pax to disengage as well. And you got to realize two to one units lost is not that bad. The problem for Rainer is his work account. Being stuck on 70 workers. Yeah, he's got a hive and a lurker down almost here. Plus one range, plus two melee on the way, as well as those muscular organs. But Max Pax is not sitting on mass stalker. And my biggest criticism of Max Pax PVZ is I'd say one in two, one in three games, he just masses on stalkers and he gets way ahead and then he just makes like 50, 60 stalkers and gives the the, pro, the Zerg a time and chance to get back in the game. In this game, we've got Templar Archives, we've got the Robo Building, Colossus, we've got double upgrades and he really should just make no stalkers extra for the rest of this game. 20 stalkers is more than enough. Beyond 20, they basically just get stuck behind each other and clump up for splash damage and stuff like that and they're especially weak to Lurker Techs, which is now, I would argue, going more than two or at most three Colossus is bad. And that is because the Lurker Tech is already here. Seismic Spines is on the way. A couple of Lurkers morphing. There'll be plenty more behind that the moment Rainer gets these gases up and mining, which he is doing now. Things on the right side. Oh, that's not a good time to start a fifth base. That should be an easy cancel for those plus one Zerglings. Max Pax does cancel in time, but even his Zealots and the Probe will go down. Nicely done there by Rainer. Oracles come back to clean it up. The Zerglings do have to back away. Stalkers and a single Colossus in the middle of the map. This seems a bit janky from Max Pax. Feels like Max Pax has massive tech and economy, but he's acting like he's got a giant army when he doesn't. Like, which, don't get me wrong. There's advantages to doing that. The best players do this a lot, where they act like they want to fight when they don't really want to fight. And it makes it very hard to read into what they're doing. Whereas a lot of lesser players like myself, I'll go, oh, I shouldn't. I don't want to take a fight right now. I should go sit in my corner of the map. And that just gives your opponent comfort, gives them room to drone up, gives them room to chill out. Whereas Rainer, on the other hand, has been under pressure from start to finish. So if a random person enters my, my, my house unannounced, I can't screwdriver their eye? No, no, that's, that's against the law. I don't know where you guys live, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say, 
every country in the world, you're not allowed to do that. That doesn't sound like a thing you're allowed to do. Actually, Texas might be okay with that. Let's be real. If 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 it seems like you were trying to burglar and you're just a neighbor coming in saying hello, I, I cooked you some pie. They they might be. I don't know. I don't know how those laws work, but I I, I imagine I imagine it is a slightly different test for whether that person's actually a criminal or not in each place. <laughs> A screwdriver to the eye seems like it's always going to be illegal. That's different to, like, a dude coming at you with a weapon in your house or something. I don't know. That's, that's, it just, it seems, seems wild. That seems wild, but yeah, who knows, man? Who knows? Once you're on my property, you're in my world, you know? <laughs> you're in my little country right now, my little personal country. And, uh, you, you, you've stepped, you know, it's, it's like, um... I don't know. There's something funny about it. the idea of it's like you just cross my national borders with a with a military force. Like that's basically a tacit declaration of warfare. Let's go. Uh, oh, Lurker shuffles back. Oh, links around. Rainer says, Max Max, have you been to get wrecked town? No, you haven't. How about a free ticket? Takes him on a ride, wrecks the Zealot Ark. On the Lurker, we'll go down to the Oracle, but. That was a real nice usage of a big pack of Zerglings, man. Having Adrenaline plus two gives them such great firepower. Lurker Zergling coming around as well. I love that my, my YouTube comments, if this goes on YouTube, as well as my Twitch chat, is just going to be completely people arguing about stand your ground and castle lore and all this other stuff. And like, right now in my Twitch chat, people are discussing, does... does does, I don't think Castle Law covers torture, though. <laughs> what if the eye socket is just the... It, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop talking about the screwdriver to the eye socket scenario that someone suggested. I'll stop. Lurker, Ling on the top. They don't have a lot of support, though. Rainy's going to have to attack at the south at the same time. But the army's out there ready to greet him. Watch out. Psy Storm is ready. Fleet Beacon's on the way. 3-2 upgrades. Almost done for Max Max. Rainer does have plus two range on the way. Oh, this is some sick multi-prong, man. That Lurker up the top is being a big nuisance as well. Max Pack struggling to deal with it. He will get on top with a Zealot flank, but I don't think he has the numbers to actually take it out. The Immortal does sidestep a few Lurker Spines, but the rest of the army has to come north to clean this up, and Rainer does back off, but only after a few excellent engagements. Now, the other weakness Max Max has in late game uh, PvZ we've talked about a lot recently is that he doesn't like to take fifth bases. Oh, nice feedbacks from Max Pack. So only a single Immortal got abducted there, and a lot of that army just has to back away for Rainer. The question on this map is, where would you take the 6th? I kind of feel like Max Max should want to take this base. You know, you got Cannon Battery here. Taking this one out front feels a little exposed. Even... Uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to do it. The, so, so the attraction here is you can push forward and deny the enemy bases. And as long as you're willing to, like, control the north side of the map with your main army, you're kind of protecting it as you push. Now, that's weird. That's a weird army split. He sent all of his expendable Stalker Zealot units to the north, all of his Robo units to the south, but they don't have any High Templar guarding them. Which means if there's new Vipers, they can wreck him. Now, don't get me wrong, he did feed back all the Vipers, but one's still alive. Luckily for him, Rainer is not rebuilding those Viper Zealot Stalker running south, clearing up creep, trying to... Uh, sorry, Max Pax is trying to remove Rainer's map control. Carrier's building, plus one air weapons. Two more Stargates on the way, hello. Air transition is fully underway now for Max Pax, or at least fully getting going, I should say. Only one carrier out, but he's going to start building three at a time in the near future. Mothership's building as well, and the eight Broodlords come in for Rainer. Rainer's been forced to late game. He does struggle at this stage of the game. He's been very vocal about it. He does have adaptive talents and seismic spines. Stalker Zealot in the north continuing to be a nuisance. Rainer may have to just accept that he's going to be on even or less bases than Max Pax, and he's just got to look for extreme efficiency. How he finds that efficiency... I do not know. He's only got one Viper, eight Broodlords, 15 Lurkers, and beyond that, what does he have? A few Queens, a few Hydras, like a couple Zerglings? It feels like you've got the ultimate anti-ground army, but Max Pax is going into carriers. Now, he's maxed out, so he can't build too many, but that's a very good catch. The Lurkers trying to do a run by. Stasis Strap freezes them up. Plasma Shield starting for the Protoss player. Stalkers blinking in. Oh my god! A few Lurkers without any support just get one shot by the Stalkers. Max Pax with a brutal maneuver in the top left of the map. More Lurkers and Lings have to frantically get over there. But that is a frustrating move to deal with. Lurker on the right side may try to cut off some of his retreat. Good move there for Rainer. We'll get a few decent hits off, but the Stalkers will take it out. Single Lurkers, not that powerful. It's when they concentrate their firepower. That's when it goes well. Queens will defend the Broodlords with some good transfusers. The Carrier, Max Pax, mate. Max Pax. Carrier is going to almost go down, but he does get it out of there. 
Meanwhile, the north side of the map, Mum is here. Colossus, Storm, Immortal. Spore Crawler slowing him down a little, but not for long. Mama is going to abduct them. Oh my god, the Viper abducts the Mama. There's nothing that shoots up, though. He abducts Mama again, but for what? A few Corruptors finally trickling into the fight. Reina losing this base is a disaster. Broodlords take out a High Templar and an Immortal. Cloak is active right now there, which is why only the units outside of the Cloak range are getting hit. No Overseers in this northern side. As Mama goes down, though, the vision is revealed and the Broodlords will push forward. Ooh, we're going to take a breath. This game is crazy. Uh, Lurkers in the south. Zealot run by is getting into all of his bases. Losing that top hatchery is big, but he does grab a Colossus and another one. There's nothing that shoots up. Corruptors not only got the Mama, they got rid of most of the Colossus, but the Zealots are in every base. Trying to defend this with just Lurkers is really bad. When you're kind of ahead and you have Lings just running in and surrounding these guys, it works out. But these are 3-2 Zealots, and they are causing a ruckus. Drones going down. Queens finally get that back there to tank. Rain is out of cash. Max Pax is rich right now in comparison. To be fair, Max Pax bank is mostly gas, but you got to look at what he's building. Max Pax is building three tempers, two immortals, multiple archons, plus three armor and plus one plasma shields are almost done. Plus two air weapons is started. Max Pax has a very well varied force as well. A few tempests, a few carriers, a few immortals, archons. Only one high templar. That's my main criticism. He should have three or four at least for those psi storms and those feedbacks. Understandably, not the most important unit against the Broodlords or the Lurkers, but they are against the Spellcasters and the smaller units like Lings and Hydras that support them. Alright, so Raynor does have a round of Corruptors, but he needs to be magical. And I don't just mean in terms of skill, guys. I mean he needs to be magical in terms of his execution. He needs to abduct units and actually just use his spells to basically abduct the big boys. If he can abduct the Tempest, shoot them down with the Corruptors, he's going to kill a lot of Max Max bank advantage. And Ling's coming in to deny the southern base as well. Could be huge. Oh, he's going to get the Nexus. He's going to get the Nexus. No cancel for Max Max. Good move there. No Burrow in this game. He starts it up now, realizing, yeah, Burrow would have been really useful there. But Max Max is stuck on five base. And this is the Max Max problem I talked about, is Max Max gasses out in longer games. There's so many times he's had the advantage over Serral, and Serral just claws his way back from here. The question is, can Reyna do the same thing? The other question, <laughs> is it worth long distance mining the purple gas? I would say it, it is in the eventually, at some point it will be. It will be eventually, not now. There's, there's better things you can do. You've already got a ton of gas in the bank, but eventually you do want to mine that out. Looks like he'd abducted an immortal, maybe. Units lost tab, 22,000 for Reyna, 20,000 for Max Bex, so... Max Max is ahead there, and he's going to deny this base. A couple Lurkers and Hydras there. He needs to get the Corruptors over here. Max Pax is going to run in the south. This hatchery here, not the most useful. Looks like the Purple Gas was already denied. Oh, Infestor comes forward. Corruptors coming in. This is what I was talking about. It is only one High Templar, but it does feed back the Viper exactly what it needed to do. Corruptors are trading. Carrier goes down. Tempest goes down. Another Tempest falls. The Archons are doing big damage to those Corruptors, but it's not enough to make it that efficient, is it? Mummer's in the south. Oh, gosh. Oh gosh, time warp! Watch out for the time warp! The lurkers pull back, the queens do damage, mama, and Max Pax, respecting Raynor, does back off. Units lost tab now, 1500 in resources resources in favor of Raynor. He just traded 3,500 resources more efficiently. Max Pax, 6th base, only just got up. He's trying to take a 7th base up here as well, but Max Pax, he needs to get a move on with keeping those bases up, and he needs to find some efficiency. Corruptors find mama! But... Max Pax will get revenge. He'll take out at least three or four Corruptors with his Stalkers. Those Corruptors went deep. I don't know if that was super worth it. Mothership's expensive, but it's not as expensive as four or five Corruptors. So actually good trade for Max Pax does no doubt slow down that advantage gain that Rainer has been getting over the last few minutes. Oracle and Mortal Archon will deny the Lurkers. So the seventh base of Max Pax does stand strong. He hasn't started mining gas on his sixth. There we go. Now he does. He's on 77 workers. There's no way he's mining efficiently with that. You can see this base is oversaturated. This base is almost completely out of minerals. This one here, yeah, he's, he's long distance mining with a bunch of dudes. Now moving to the top base as well, but he does need to move some of these workers on. Broodlords find some army. They get a stalker. Only a stalker, not a big deal. Those broodlings, remember, nowhere near as fast or high damage as they used to be. They're nowhere near as tanky as they used to be either, actually. Broodlings have been massively nerfed. The Broodlord itself is much faster. I say much. I'm not sure what the total gain has been over the last few patches, maybe 20% faster, something like that. But it does make a difference in terms of its ability to position. Now, he was looking for neurals, but there's a cannon there. That cannon is going to make it impossible to neural unless he comes forward. And with that revelation, it's time to pull back. Get out of there. 
Get out of there. He's looking for the Abducts. The Tempest coming close. Nah, there's no way, man. Storm goes down. Broodlord's trying to siege this base. Maxpax, I, I think, has got enough to steal with this. The Lurkers in the north will pepper this army. Maxpax loses a couple Stalkers. Does back away with the northern army. After all, those immortal barriers are set off. And I think Raynor may have to ev uh, evacuate from here. That being said, if he wants to defend this base, he, he needs to get rid of this one, right? Otherwise, the uh, Tempests are going to be a big problem. Oh, look at this sneaky catch. He's going to catch himself some Immortals in the middle of the map. Maxpax has not really re been rebuilding a lot of High Templar guys. He does have four in the south, none in the north. Army in the north is looking kind of hodgepodge, to be fair. It does take out a few rallying drones, but that's about it. Army in the south pushes forward. Oh, we could neural him. Oh, he's looking for the Fungal. Didn't quite get it. Go to unburrow to fungal, but you can tentacle or hentacle units from underground. The secret hentacle maneuver. Oh, Corruptor's going forward. Ah, big storms and feedbacks on the infestors. Oh, good fight for Maxpax. Great defense, great defense. Oh, Neural. Nice Neural on the Archons, though. Those Archons are going to add some real significant damage. Trying to focus down those infestors with the Tempests. But those Neurals, or at least one of them, is still going strong. Broodlord's doing some great damage. Corruptors will take out the Tempest. That extra Neural on the southern side as well. Look at the range of that man's tentacle. Holy crudsicles. Does take out the Oracle as well. Stalkers blink forward. The Infestors are still there, though. He unburrows, ready to fungal. Lots of Stalkers do end up falling. North side, Raynor keeps the base alive. South side, Raynor punishes Maxpax. Maxpax is so Stalker heavy. What's going on, guys? Why does he have 18 Stalkers in this army? He's actually trying to counter Broodlords with ground. Wow. But the moment the Lurker Fungal hits, the Stalkers evaporate. He did get rid of two Broodlords, but it's not ideal. Tempests are a much better counter unit. Lurkers in the north. Oh, God, the recall. The recall. Oh, no. Oh, the recall time warp combo. Oh, absolutely brutal. You're like, lol, you're out of position, Protoss player. Let's punish you. And the recall on top of the army, the time warp to block. At least he's got a few lurkers killing the southern base, but Raynor loses a chunk of army, loses a lot of economy as well. He's rebuilding Ling Hydra right now to go with his handful of broodlords and whatnot. Oh no, he's losing the lurkers on the right. His Lings should get in there. His Lings should absolutely get rid of that southern base as quickly as possible. He cannot be letting Max Max mine. He does deny this base in the north, which is good. Max Max pushing right up into the rally, which is a crazy move. 3 2 Hydras popping out and getting killed instantly. Infestors can use your Parasite on that Archon, potentially. Down in the south, Lings will deny that base. They could go on to the next one. That's so many plus three, two melee uh, Adrenal Zerglings that they actually could do really well. Queens need to get out of here. Oh, God. Broodlords, though. Dude, if Raynor wins this fight, he could win the game. Max Max Bank is mostly gone. Broodlings are doing massive damage to that Archon. Your Parasite, not that effective. Does end up taking it down. Great pullback decision here for Max Max, but the Abducts are coming in. He does try to recall. Two Tempests are going to fall. The Broodlords blink forward to try and protect, and they take a big hit from the Broodlords. Viper's got to be careful, though. He's looking for the Abduct, and he doesn't get it. He goes too deep. Raynor is going too deep right now. The Stalker Archon will cover Maxpax retreat. Maxpax mining has dried up. Problem. Maxpax can make fighting units with gas. Raynor cannot. This is the big advantage when you get into a low economy game that Protoss has always had over Zerg. Archons are tanky. They do splash, and they shoot up, and they shoot down. No, no, no one else really has a gas unit that's that, 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 that is that good at fighting. Don't get me wrong, they're a bit clunky, a bit short-ranged, but they're generally a very well-rounded combat unit, right? Uh, Zerg don't have that. Now, to be fair, it doesn't do anything against Terran because they have EMP in the late game usually. But against Zerg, the Archon late game gas dump is just massive. I love that. Burrows the drone after cancelling his hatchery. Trying to rebuild the top left, Zealot being a nuisance. Remember, it is 331 upgrades, plus 3 air attack as well for Max Bax, though air is not his focus. He's going ground plus Tempests. And I think this is, in my opinion, has always been one of the best styles in PvZ because you have such a mobility advantage. So rather than it turning to a bit of a standoff when you play carriers up against Broodlords, the Tempest style can chip at your opponent. You can use the Mothership for recall. There's a lot of good things you can do. Lings do find the long distance mining here. Rainy's only on 38 drones, Max Bax on 56. But both players keep denying each other's bases. Max Pax does kill the Burrowed Zergling. The Observer there on the left side in surveillance mode provides vision. Southern base is strong right now, though. This is this is income advantage for Raynor. He will be mining more off that base. But the Siege comes in. Tempest from the bottom right. Max Pax is going to try and take it. Max Pax should stop splitting his focus, maybe. Maybe just focus on fighting in one area. I think he's worried about getting caught by the Infestors or the Vipers, so he's trying to use the mobility advantage, but... At this point, it does look like he's gathering everything up for one big surround, perhaps. 
Tempest will poke and prod, and then if Raynor jumps forward, this Northern Army can flank, hit him from the broadside, and do massive damage. Max Max has a lot of gas in the bank. Doesn't necessarily just want to have a billion Archons, though. He's got five High Templars, six Archons. I think I think I like this idea of just, you know, saving his last 15 supply to build whatever he thinks the correct units are. Having just a little bit more splash damage won't necessarily help him. Ooh, if Festa goes down. Oh, Storms! Big Storms. The Fungals seem nice. He does Neural a few of these units. Raynor goes for the Neural combo. But if those Infestors get blasted, that is a big problem. Max Pax is focus firing those Infestors. He's actually overkilling massively. The Corruptors are killing a lot of Tempest. I need to check in on the units lost up. I, I, I have no idea who won that trade. It's still very close to dead even. Max Pax is ahead of 1,000 resources. The Broodlords are a little late to the party. A couple of Lurkers and a Queen go down, but then the Broodlords arrive. And a fair bit of that Protoss force will be getting hammered. Nice transfuses as well for Raynor. Lings in the north yet again. He's going to go after the Nexus, the Cannons, and the Zealots. Oh, dude. Max Pax is going to lose all of his bases. Raynor's still going to have a base alive after this. Max Pax is out of cash. That Colossus is finally getting sniped by the Corruptors. The Broodlords are there as well. Looks like Raynor's got Corruptors and Broodlords on the same control group. Not something you see every day. Lings are going after that northern base. A recall is there. Lings might actually be able to overwhelm some of that, but no, the Psy Storm does clean up the Zergings, especially with the Oracle Laser Beam. And that is a good defense by Max Pack. Southern base does go down. Those Broodlings will finish that off. Rainer has this base mining. He's got a new base finishing on the left that has four minerals and a bunch of gas left at it. Max Pax is down 2,000 resources in the units lost. Max Pax is also at half the army supply. Rainer is actually making an incredible comeback. Remember, this game started with him tunneling a queen acro across the minerals. A move that some Zergs are adamant is amazingly good and uh, other Zergs say is bad, puts you behind every single time. Uh, we then followed up with Max Pax going for some wild plays of his own, non-stop stalker aggression. He's done mothership recalls to trap the army. This game has been so back and forth for so long, but Raynor with his corruptive Viper usage has been exceptional. He's just catching so many of these units, but he needs to defend the south. He cannot lose this base. The Archons and Stalkers taking big damage from the Lurkers. Here we go. Lings are rushing into the Archons and, and rushing into the Archons and crashing upon them. They are breaking though. They aren't getting that much damage. These Broodlords have no support. They are very weak to Stalkers right now. Luckily, there's only nine Stalkers. If, if he had a bunch of 3 3 1, like 15 Stalkers, he could blink on top. Corruptors unzip their flies. Rainer starts to give him the Italian, the Italian juice. Unzips his fly, starts peeing all over the Nexus, does take it down. The Stalkers don't quite have enough to one shot. He split fires though to finish off two of those Broodlords. Broodlords need to get to the corner. The Archons are falling. As long as he stays in the dead space though, the Archons are falling. Great plays by Raynor. Problem is the Broodlords are isolated. He needs to try and work his way back along the left side of the map to get back to defend his economy. This base will go down. He's going to run the drones, try and burrow them. He does try to hide those behind the base. Ling's finding more probes. This base is still being denied. Dude, Max Max income is gone. He's out of income. He's got nothing. He's even long distance mined out the gas geyser, which Rainer can still mine 600 gas on his gas geyser if he needs that later on. Corruptor does go down. You got to be careful, mate. 13 stalkers, 7 archons, 2 immortals. You've got 5 lurkers with some infestors, 10 broodlords. If those broodlords get home, you're fine. Oh, Max Max with the ambush. Rainer a little slow on the micro, but it does not matter. Ra Max Max has realized he cannot win. And dude, I... I got this replay from Max Pax. I assumed that he won this game. I am amazed. Guys, shout out to Max Pax. I, I assumed he won this game. I was like, I don't, I didn't check on purpose so that I would be a bit hyped. But I was like, he sent me this replay and I, I bet he's like Rainer and only sends me replays he wins. But that was actually a banger. Hope you guys enjoyed that game. I think this was really cool to see such a back and forth game with pretty much every unit. We didn't see ultras. And I don't think we saw Banelings either. But that was still a bloody fun game. I'm not even in the right spot on my overlay, am I, right now? It doesn't matter. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, big thanks to Maxpax for sharing the replays. Rain is over in Korea right now. This was played just before he went there. So thank you very much, Maxpax, for sharing such an awesome game. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Goodbye and good night.